look today at some principles of playing back foot play from a tactical perspective, a mental perspective, and we're also going to show some drills that you could be doing at home. Fortunately, we've got Marcus here today, and he is going to just talk a little bit about, first of all, what are his tactics against playing the short ball? So my sort of principle of looking to face someone who's bowling quite quickly, if I don't know who they are, first and foremost, and I haven't faced them before, then potentially I'm going to be looking to try and sort of get out of way, sort of duck and weave a little bit on their short ball uh, until I get a feel for what it's going to be like. Probably not trying to attack them too early until I get to understand what it's going to be. Then after a period of time, if I think then I've got the sort of pace of the pitch, uh, I'm playing well enough, uh, and I'm also seeing where the ball is being bowled and when they're bowling short, then I could potentially try and attack them after that. So then, knowing what sort of shots you might be trying to play, is there anything you would do differently um, as against facing a medium pace bowler? Yeah, I think there's a couple of different things that would be important to, to making sure you're getting your game plan right, and it's obviously easier to show. So yeah, I'm not then trying to get into the ball a great deal, um, because you, A, you don't have time. So obviously if someone's bowling really fast, I'm not going to have a real amount of time to get right into the ball. So you've got to be making sure the ball's going to get to you, and then it's a body weight move, a shift into the ball that's going to be the most important part. Hitting the ball then at the right point. But you're also thinking potentially if they're bowling quicker, they're going to use more short balls, more buffers. Um, I would be looking to potentially trying to cut, punch, clip off the back foot. It's going to be more important to hit a forward foot rather than forward. So in simple, simple terms, you wouldn't look to commit too early and then your movements would be quite small. Yeah, only because you don't have time to make them too big. If he's bowling at 85, 90 miles an hour, you don't have time to really, you know, get the big Ricky Ponting sort of forward motion, motion into the ball. You've got to be waiting for the ball to get to you, and it's coming to you at, at a good pace. But as long as you're getting your body into the ball, moving it backwards and forwards, that's going to be and more would, important. Would that be the same on the back foot? Because a, a lot of principles around coaching on the back foot show quite big movements back. Yeah. Would yours be? No. I, I, my sort of movement comes from, on the back foot, will come from my sort of trigger movement. So my trigger movement being back slightly anyway, you're sort of loading on the back foot to be able to then, to then move forward, but then you'll press a little bit of movement back forward, but always trying to still make sure it's coming forward at the end of it. Okay, and we're, we're going to go and do some drills where you'll be able to see that those in action. Okay, so you've talked a little bit about the tactics you might use there. Um, how mentally do you prepare for someone, in some cases it might just be the pace, but also maybe just a bowler that you think is really good, um, because in some cases I see young players who almost think someone's good and then doubt that they can play against them. anything you do to help that? Uh, I think that, that builds from time, a, a bit of a experience, um, you know, trying to work on confidence with, with your coach, you know, ways and methods to understand it. But, be prepared to fight, you know, get stuck in. Don't, don't think, right, just because he's a good bowler that he's going to get the best of you today. You know, you've got to be prepared to work hard. And it, sometimes it might be ugly, it might be, you know, it might not look great, but the, the outcome is, is what you're looking for at the end of the day. Just be prepared to really dig in and make it work. Um, and eventually you hopefully come through the other side. So if we talk about perhaps a real experience, I'm in face of, say, Brett Lee. Is there anything you've been doing specifically to preparing facing someone like that, that quality? Yeah, well, you know, facing somebody with, with a high class and also high speed, um, you've got to be mindful of what they're going to be bowling. Um, talking, going back to a little bit about the technique of what position I would try to be getting, maybe trying to score more on the back foot, thinking about pull shot once I was getting used to his pace at the pitch um, and try and put him under pressure. Um, but you've always in the back of your mind that, that real quick short ball making sure that you're getting out of the way, get hit, you know, getting hit, right, it's going to hurt, but it doesn't get you out at the end of the day. Um, so be prepared to, you know, to wear a few. Um, just have your game plan about what it's going to be, where you're going to score around the ground, what positions am I going to score. I'm not going to really be flipping, flashing drives, might be a little back cut down here, I might be looking at pull, I might be looking at a punch down the ground. So in essence, you're you're limiting the, the shots that you might use to a particular bowler. Yes, definitely, because because of the pace that he has or the skill he has in the fashion that he bowls, I won't be looking all round the pitch to try and score the different areas. It would be 
simple two or three areas that you can try and score from them. So we've talked there about facing really high class bowling. Obviously there are lots of different bowlers in the world and some who might not be quite as good. Um, would there be any difference in facing someone that you think you can be more aggressive to with, with, short, with the shorter ball? Uh, for sure, you know, you, we talked about you know, not knowing what their short ball is like, but if you face this somebody who's bowling at you before in many occasions, you might have had other success in different games or um, series that you've played in. Um, and you'll know, and, and if you're feeling confident at the time, you're used to the surface and the conditions, you're seeing the ball well, um, then yeah, why not be aggressive and, and try and attack them and put the bowler under pressure. Um, but the one word I think is, you know, the one bit of advice really, you've got to be very careful not to be overconfident and be over aggressive in what you're trying to do. If you're feeling that they're comfortable to face, then be ruthless. Be, be there at the end of the day when you're 150 not out is the one way that you can show that you're disciplined about what you're trying to do. Because yes, I could try and whack them out the ground and try and slog them everywhere, but at every chance then my risk goes up, the reward is gonna be a lot less. So the one way is to make sure you be ruthless and stick in there for the whole day. So being ruthless, that obviously involves the ability to concentrate for a long period. Um, was that easier against high quality bowling as against a poorer bowler? Sometimes. Sometimes it was, sometimes it wasn't. I think when you're playing in test matches, um, the high, everybody's at a certain level of what you really expect. Um, so you're trying to get an understanding about what it is. At the end of the day, you've got to try and be as disciplined and have that mental approach to concentrating every day that's really going to make you succeed and that's regardless if you're playing against Bangladesh or Australia you know if you don't concentrate and you don't treat them with respect you know you're just as likely to get out against Bangladesh as you would be against the best. In simple terms what was your concentration process? Uh, that changed quite considerably throughout the whole period of time. Uh, sometimes you go through phases when it was just literally watch the ball, watch the ball, watch the ball. It's this talk, that, that self-talk in your own mind other times it would just be, you know, a simple other plan of um, watching the ball. You know, no, nothing really going through your mind. Um, but it's at the end of the day, it's that discipline of what you're trying to do, making sure it's repetitive, game on, game on, game on all the time. Every, after every ball, you have to be the same. If you didn't, then that's when you, well, you wouldn't be in there. So within those different phases, would your uh, pre-match, pre-day, pre-match pre-day, pre-match training, would that be quite regimented? Yeah, you know, so having that process of what you're trying to do, um, you know, I would go out and have a little net before the start of the day. If there's bowlers around, then great. If there wasn't, then you people would throw them um, as much as they could. Um, and you know, I might bat for 10 minutes, I might bat for 20 minutes, depends how much time you had. Um, but it would be as simple as that. And that would, I wouldn't really want to try and expand on it uh, too much. But I had to get to that point where I knew what I was doing. I had to get, I had a journey. You know, there was times when I'd go out and hit a few underarms, 10 balls into the net and try that. Then I might go, there was a period of time when I did nothing on the morning when I was going to bat. Um, you know, you just got to try and get it and, and work it out. Um, because there's no obvious way. I can't say to you, or to anyone say, right, this is the way to do it. Because it's not, but what you might do, and what I might do, and what you might do is all completely different. But when you were having a consistent approach, do you think that then helps in that consistency of concentration when you then play in a game? I think it can. I, I don't think it's the ultimate answer, but I think you want to try and be as consistent in your preparation and your thinking and your routine as much as you can. So, you know, they were very much a case of when I was batting beforehand, you might have a net, but, you know, you have your routine where you, you tap a couple of times, you stand up and look, tap once more and away you go. You, it has to be the same every time. You know, that's where it, there's no, that's a non-negotiable almost, because there's no point just standing there like that one time and then standing like this the next one. It's not going to work. And in a separate part, we're going to look at um, processing and, and how to uh, keep things consistent for different parts of the performance. But now we're going to go and do some short pitch bowling drills. The first drill that we're going to do is an evasion drill. Uh, good idea, despite using a tennis ball to wear a helmet if you've got one. Um, and basically all I'm going to do is I'm underarming the ball from the length that it would come from. And I'm trying to hit Marcus. What 
I'm trying to do at this very moment in time. I'm trying to get real light on my feet so I can move and sort of move quickly. You can see the sort of, sort of constant sort of tapping almost. And then I'm watching the ball and trying to see and make a quick decision where I need to sway out the way that way or duck underneath it and let it go back that way. But it's always quite tricky, but you've got to be moving. You've got to be moving. You've got to be ready to make, sure, make a big dip or make a big sway. The progression of this is to get a bat involved, but Marcus is still going to be thinking about leaving the ball. I'm going to make sure I mix the feet up so some are going to be going through head height and some are going to be lower where he's going to have to defend and play the ball. That's a good one. <laughs> okay, the next progression is Marcus is allowed to play any shot that he chooses to. Oh. So Marcus there, you had the choice of playing any shot but still pretty defensive. Yeah, I think Going back to what we talked about before, about trying to get used to the pitch, the bowler, and get an understanding. I want to try now and be a bit more aggressive and attack it. But with it being so close and quite quick, you know, the decision making is so slow. So I'm getting to this point thinking, can I? And then no, and you try and bail out at that point. But hopefully I can get in a bit more. Maybe if he goes back in the drill and throws it from further distance, I can then start attacking him, playing a few more pull shots or bigger shots to try and score runs. Now I've come back a little bit further, which is going to give Marcus a bit more time and potentially more options. Okay, I'm going to go back to a shorter distance now, but Marcus knows that he's going to have to try and play a pull shot. This is to improve the reactions and the speed of how quickly you can play a pull. So Marcus, just referring back to something you said uh, about it can look a bit messy sometimes playing bowling that's a bit uncomfortable. That looks a bit messy, would that be a fair description? Um, because it's fast and it's rapid fire, then there's always going to be that extra challenge there of the, the short amount of time to get your back back in position, your body in position. I still felt in control, I still felt like I was hitting the ball where I wanted to hit the ball, but it was obviously put, it put me more under pressure because of the speed that everyone was coming at it. So it doesn't necessarily have to be technically perfect, it can be a bit messy, but interesting word, control. So hopefully that gives you some things at home that you can practice about. Great insight to the mental side and the tactical side of how to play short pitch bowling or bowling that you're a little bit unsure of. Different drills that you can do where you're slightly restricted sometimes in your shot play to then that being more progressive and you can play lots of different shots. And then that reaction drill at the end, just where you start to build up that confidence in your ability to play messy but controlled shots.